Let me ask you perhaps the most basic question. Do you believe that there will be some fourth round, as it's called? Is this a matter of whether or is it a matter of when? I think it's a question of when and to what extent. What we don't understand right now is the magnitude of the economic pain. We have current statistics, uh, but we don't know what this looks like as states, uh, state by state, uh, uh, reemergence into the normal economy, how that develops. Uh, Tennessee and Georgia, we see examples there, but uh, it seems slow that uh, people are getting back to normal economic life out of health safety. And so what I, what I am counseling is that we, uh, you know, measure twice and cut once. If we're going to legislate again, let's make sure that we're hitting those and helping those uh, that need the most assistance in doing the right thing for the long term of our country. There's the question of how the overall economy is going. As you suggest, Congressman, it may well vary, will vary probably from state to state. But isn't there a pretty broad agreement that the states themselves, the state and local governments are really getting hit? We have both Republican and Democratic governors coming forward and saying we're really getting hit both on increased costs and on reduced revenues. Should we be doing something about that in the meantime? Yes, and I, I think you'll have some level of state aid be a part of the next package. It's a question of what you get in return for, for doing this. Do you say to the states you have to be fiscally responsible on a going forward basis, have to have a rainy day fund on a going forward basis? Many of these states uh, were in poor financial conditions before this happened, and we don't want to just prop up profligate spending at the state level. We want to be effective to ensure that states – uh, don't have to uh, declare bankruptcy. And so I think there is some level of consensus around that for the next package. Uh, but we're not pressed right now. I think we have uh, two to three months before that becomes a pressing issue. So does that suggest that perhaps this could wait two or three months, that maybe we shouldn't expect anything until in, well into the summer? Yeah, I, I think we're looking at June or July before you have the next round of package, uh, of spending package come out of Congress. I think that would be the responsible thing. Uh, I'll give you one example. The university systems. Do we know if universities are, and colleges are going to go back in the fall? We know if uh, they don't have students in the dorms, you have a massive physical plant uh, for every one of these uh, universities. Uh, are you going to have, um, are you going to have states impacted based off of uh, their university systems not having students on campus, and to what extent. So let's make sure that we understand the issues that, that are affecting people before we try to seek to fix them. Currently, we still have additional funds to probably the tune of over a trillion dollars that's yet to be actually put out into the market uh, from the last CARES Act. So let's make sure that those dollars are effective before we spend again. Uh, that's about the next round, the so-called fourth round. Let's talk about the rounds that have come so far. You were a very active proponent of the payroll protection program, particularly for smaller businesses. We now have an inspector general report suggesting that maybe that money, a lot of it, didn't go where Congress really intended and went to somewhat larger companies, not the smaller ones. Are you concerned about that issue? Sure. I, I'm always concerned about uh, the taxpayer dollar being spent effectively and in compliance with the law. What we see here, where the inspector general highlighted, is that they largely did that. And when you're putting out uh, three to four hundred billion dollars in a period of four weeks, uh, there are going to be uh, mistakes made, and there were mistakes made with this program. But it was still largely effective. There's, uh, there are thousands of small businesses that are around today because of this assistance, and. You have tens of thousands of, of employees that are able to collect a paycheck because of the Paycheck Protection Program. So it was still largely effective, though there were some failures. Uh, Congressman, whether it's round one, two, three, or a possible four, how are we going to pay for this? We're talking about something like, I think, $4 trillion in deficit at this point. That money has to come from somewhere, or does it? It does. It, it, eventually, uh, it, the... It comes home to roost. Um, and on this, uh, I think we have to be methodical about this ne next spending package because over the long term, uh, we are going to have to pay this money back. 
Uh, our debt and deficits will impair economic growth for the next generation. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are appropriate in response to this crisis and not overspend, but effectively spend and, and make sure that we don't put uh, 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 needlessly put people through additional pain. And that we get treatment resources online, that we get new testing online. Um, and those things uh, are, are highly important. And then as we reemerge, we need to make sure that we have a uh, deregulation agenda that lifts people into being able to use their money more effectively and, and some tax relief paired with that so you can get people back on their feet very quickly. Well, that's my question about tax relief, actually, because we're hearing out of the White House that what they'd like in a new package would include uh, payroll tax suspension or forgiveness and maybe even capital gains relief. Does that make sense if we're worried about the deficit that we're going to be cutting taxes at the same time? Don't we have to pay for this through increased taxes at some point? Yes, and, and that's why I think you have to have entitlement reform paired with, uh, paired with uh, uh, payroll tax relief uh, a bill. And I think we can marry those two things up so that we uh, we pair down our uh, our entitlement spending o over the next uh, 20, 30 years. And the pay for uh, and the trade off there was that, that you would get uh, uh, some tax relief in the short term for those that are most affected by the shutdown of our economy. I think that's a quite a good pairing. You actually have long term cuts in order to pay for uh, a short term uh, program. Can you have uh, something that's been talked about forever and nothing has been done about, that is to say entitlement re reform, at a time when some of the, the least fortunate among us are being hit the hardest by this pandemic? This is not the time necessarily to hit the social net, right? That, that's exactly right. I think you, you've hit it. Uh, I mean, th this is – we have a series of very complex decisions we have to make. The, the initial decision to, to shut down – was a much clearer decision than what we're faced with coming out of this. What's the proper response with tax relief? What's the proper response for spending? Uh, how does that pair with our debt and deficit predictions? How does that match up with public safety and public health? And these things are quite complex uh, issues that we've got to struggle with um, and, uh, and work through on a bipartisan basis so we give the public some reassurance it's, it's safe and uh, to re-engage in the economy, and that our long-term finances are adept so you can invest in this country. Does a payroll tax cut make sense when it only goes to people who have jobs and the people who need to be taken care of are the ones who don't have jobs? <laughs> well, yeah, uh, well it, it's tough to say that to the, the person who wants to get a job. Um, and so what I, what I see with the unemployment rate skyrocketing uh, most of these folks uh, were employed before. They, uh, they want to work. They want to provide value. They, it is a meaningful part of their life. And so uh, what I would say is uh, it, that payroll tax relief is about getting people back into the economy uh, and off of unemployment insurance um, and back into reengaging to grow this economy back out. And I think that would be a nice incentive for people to be able to get back into working and off the uh, more generous, um, the more generous uh, unemployment benefits that were part of the last CARES package. 